Hello everyone, my name is Trotsenko Nikolai from company Tronic. Today's our guest is Dodge Ram TRX and I will tell you about a full cycle of how we study this vehicle, how we scan it, design it, manufacture parts for it. We will install a new brake system and test it, of course. The brake system installed here is a default one. Brake disc the size of 378 mm in diameter and 30 mm thick. A floating caliper design has two pistons. This brake system is designed for 18-inch wheel disc. Standard brake system for the rear axle, diameter 375 mm, 22 mm thick. Floating caliper, designed with one piston and a modern parking brake system integrated in the main caliper. Meaning, hydraulic and mechanical calipers integrated as a whole. Well, it's a common story, which will we disconnect accordingly. We will have a separate parking brake caliper and a separate four-piston aluminium caliper. I am a certified engineer and therefore we will apply a modern design method here. When we scan the components of the brake system, the knuckle and the wheel disc. Now we will dismantle the brake caliper and the disc hang the caliper neatly on plastic clamps here so it is out of the way and scan the knuckle. While the dismantling is happening, I would like to take a moment and tell you about the components that we will use for this vehicle. The front axle will have a brake rotor 400 mm in diameter and 40 mm thick. It is very light, we will do a comparative analysis afterwards. And a wonderful 10 piston caliper by the Akebono company. Now, the hub part is designed and manufactured specifically for RAM TRX. The rear axle will have a rotor 410 by 32 mm and a 4 piston caliper. The caliper is not ready yet, but this is a sample of it that I'm showing. So, we have dismantled the brake caliper and brake disc. We hang the caliper on the plastic clamps. Hydraulics remain untouched for now, but we'll get to it soon. Our task is to scan the knuckle the hub, a fairly massive work of art, so to say. To give you an idea, this hole here is for an M16 screw. All of this is quite large, although the knuckle itself is aluminium. Now, it's time to show the process how it all scanned. So, we have a quite a simple scanner. It operates within its focal length. In order to get the picture of maximum quality, it is necessary to acquire the maximum possible amount of green dots on the screen. And you have to cover the whole knuckle. After the vehicle has been scanned, specifically our knuckle in this case, 
It is necessary to process it first as it is initially an STL file. Then to place the basis on it and finally we will be able to engage into a conceptual design. In fact, we have already processed and designed the whole vehicle. I just want to show you how the process is done. All right, the basis for a design of our brake system consists of the following. The bases are placed on the knuckle and we design according to them. We have scanned two options here, one with a shield, the other one without. Then what do we need? We need a brake disc. We design the hub part of the brake rotor, we use the pad and also we have bobbins, screws and nuts. After the preliminary designed 10 piston caliper, we plan a piston mount for it. The mount shapes are quite complex. And here is a caliper or bracket. Then we design the mudguard, highlighted in black color. All the necessary screws and most importantly, the wheel disc, the 3D models of which we get from the company Power Wheels. Saying hi to Leonid. And after we insert the models in the assembly, we understand what gap is formed. The gap between the caliper and the wheel disc. We have calculated a gap of 5.5 millimeters. Then we see all the screws, small shields, screws for fastening the bracket, and that is the whole process of a complete design. After we design the hub part, we obviously have to make it. Here we do have it ready to show. We use titanium alloy. This is a very high strength part, light, and does not fear any aggressive environments. This is our very first CNC machine. It is quite simple, but we have made many parts with it. Now, there is a brake rotor being manufactured with a size of 410 by 40 millimeters. Before that, we made first installation for aluminium, various adapters, brackets, everything that needs to be milled, we do it on this machine. Here we have a warehouse for semi-finished products, such as hub parts that have been done, milled and even engraved. The final check to do is the deburring. Titanium, aluminium. This one we have is a new TLK300 model, rare axle. And this one we have is a Genesis. And here, specifically, we have the work being done on commissioning lathe. This brake disc is 440 by 40, 440 the diameter and 40 the thickness. In order to characterize the condition of the carbon ceramic rotor, it is marked with the so-called minimum weight. The minimum weight is a certain calculated value. We found out with calculations that the manufacturer gives a delta for the rotor mass, which equals to 2.5%. For example, this specific rotor weighs 7 kilograms and 920 grams. And if we subtract 2.5%, that would give us a result of 7 kilograms and 722 grams respectively to this value of 7.722 we add the mass of the hub part and the bobbins and this will be the value that the brake disc assembly can reach meaning up to this range it is considered to be in working condition here we have a laser engraver making such rings with the central hole for proper positioning called the ringlet and then we set the disc like this. And the next step is to engrave it. 
So, here we have a process of assembly going on. The carbon ceramic brake system works at sufficiently high temperatures. So, in order to control the temperature of the rotor, special paints exist in three colors. Green, orange and red. So, the green color changes when the temperature reaches 430 Celsius, orange 560 and red at 600. Here we have already applied the colors at the back of the rotor, now we are applying the colors to the front side. We paint it from the side, here you can have a look. It looks like an ordinary paint that changes color, if the temperature reaches calculated value, it turns white. Here we have the rear and front calipers assembled. The rear caliper is with four pistons. Pins are richly lubricated as there are aggressive environments to withhold and the pad moves simultaneously. The spring is lubricated along with the pin. Front caliper with a large massive brake pad, the pin and the springs are lubricated as well. We wonder, how much does the front 10 piston caliper weigh? Together with the brake pad. Now first, to remove the tape. Like this. Twelve point eighty two kilograms. That's the front caliper with pads and a bracket. The rear caliper is 4.70 kilograms. Now, let's see how much mass the standard brake system has. Let's uh, try it now. Eleven point fifty two kilograms for the front caliper. The rear caliper is eight point three kilograms. Now the front brake disc with a size four forty by forty nine point fifty six kilograms and the rear brake disc with a size four ten by thirty two six point forty four kilograms. Now to compare to the front brake disc. The standard one with a size 378 by 30, 14.68 kilograms. And finally, rare brake disc 375 by 22. One of the features in installation of the carbon ceramic brake system, specifically on TRX, is that the diameter here has to be reduced. Initially, it is a bit too large and we lack the dimensions for a carbon ceramic rotor, that is, the central hole of the rotor is smaller than this diameter. So, we have to remove the bearing and fraternize a little for the desired diameter. This pad in my hand is designed and manufactured by us, also a very important feature for the correct functioning of the carbon ceramic brake system. It will cover everything from the inside. Let's begin the installation of the carbon ceramic brake disc and here there is a certain specificity. The surface of the carbon ceramic brake rotor is very solid and does not wear out, literally. Therefore, when installing, we definitely need to check the end runout. So now we will take the disc, put it on and yes, preliminary, we lubricate the cylindrical surface. For dismantling, we have two holes with M8 thread. So when we have to do so, we will be able to easily tighten two screws, which helps greatly when dismantling. Let's take another one here, and after that,
Now, the disk is in place. Next, we have to install the indicator stand. We are using a high-quality magnet stand by Noga company. And we have such an indicator here, as you can see. The rear axle. The mounting of the hydraulic caliper is carried out with a bracket A while the parking brake caliper is mounted by bracket B. We will mount them now to the car, so everything will be more clear. Also, in order to operate the carbon ceramic brake system correctly, a mudguard is provided. Let's mount. So, we installed the carbon ceramic brake disc on the rear left and we'll check for runout. Also, a magnetic stand is fixed here. Let's start, please. What does the indicator show? 40 microns run out of the brake disc. This is acceptable. Here, we installed the front brake disc, fixed it in place with six aluminium nuts, and here we have a VSP plank, magnetic rack, and indicator as you can see here and now we will rotate everything is within an acceptable range 40 microns the most beautiful part we install the brake caliper so you would understand the screws are m16 quite large That's a beauty. This vehicle accelerates from 0 to 160 km per hour in about 10.5 seconds time. And this amount of power needs to be able to stop. We installed a brake system with an Akebono 10 piston caliper. Brake rotor with a size of 440 by 40. Here it's 410 diameter by 32 thickness and two calipers. The first one is hydraulics that is responsible for the main braking, a four-piston one by Brembo, and the parking brake caliper, also by Brembo. The hub part is manufactured from titanium. All the necessary fasteners, protective shields, as you can see, they all protrude around the perimeter. Everything is covered. A little bit about the technical characteristics of this marble vehicle. We can't be talking only about the braking system. Here we have an engine V8, 6.2 liter, cast iron block with a driving compressor. The power skyrockets to 712 horsepower and 881 newtons. According to the manufacturer, this vehicle accelerates from 0 to 100 in 4.6 seconds and to 160 in 10.5 seconds, with a gross weight of the vehicle being more than 3,500 kilograms. The regular default brake system will, of course, experience monstrous thermal loads. It will simply overheat and eventually fail. Another important moment is the distribution of the braking torque along the axis. We have conducted an analysis, measured the stock brakes, the diameter of the system, effective radius, piston area, and what calculations have we got? For the regular brake system, we got the ratio 66 by 34 for braking torque along the axis, meaning 66% geometrically falls on the front axle and 34% on the rear. Using our installed 10 piston caliper at front and a 4 piston caliper at rear, we got a ratio of 68 by 32. So the balance of the braking torque slightly changed towards the front axle. Now we armed ourselves with a magnet and a flashlight. Let's see what we have here. We have steel lugs, steel part of the bumper, 
This also is from steel, by the way. The lower protection is from aluminium. Let's see, huge levers. Here we have a small protection that shields our field rail. Yes, uh, here we have everything aluminium. And take a look here, we have a cast iron block, redhead. This protection here is also aluminium. Please pay attention to the work we've done. Everything is covered completely. If you take a look from here, everything is protected by the Mudgod shield. Here we have the steel frame and here we have hydroforming elements, at least according to the manufacturer. What else? An impressive huge carbon shaft, a gearbox is, uh, we think, TVT or 8-speed one. Don't remember which one exactly. Next is the transfer case. By the way, it is already servo-driven and we can see some hoses are connected to it. And this here is the gas tank. Mind you, it starts here and over there it ends, near the bridge. The size is probably around a meter and a half. That's our gas tank. So, the continuous bridge, Dana 60, it is quite huge, impressive. Then, uh, Bilstein rare shock absorbers. And here we have an additional absorber. I just want to measure the diameter of the pipe. Let's see. Seventy six millimeters. What else? Let's check out construction, of course. Everything is covered, as you can see. Have a look. Everything is bushing made. Brackets. And take a look here, our bracket, hose, caliper, so everything is covered.